some this morning in the book of Romans. Uh, very familiar with scripture, but uh, those that study their Bible, uh, most of the most of the Bible is uh, familiar with scripture. So we want to go to Romans 8 this morning and do a little study there. And we we feel like that this is uh, what that the Lord would have us to read and to try to make a few comments on. We, we've uh, looked at the biggest part of the week and couldn't get settled on anything. And so uh, we finally feel like this is what the Lord would have us to study. And, uh, you pray for us and we try to teach the lesson. And, uh, you listen and uh, let the Holy Spirit uh, talk to you. Uh, a lot of times, you know, what I get up here and say ain't worth uh, a whole lot as far as getting any closer to the Lord, but the Holy Spirit is there with you this morning and uh, He certainly can speak to your hearts and souls. Amen. Uh, he can take this word that I read and uh, He can enter it. Uh, he, he can. He can cause so many thoughts to come to your mind and to your heart that uh, uh, it'll be a blessing to you. But in the book of Romans, in chapter 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And we <clears throat> want to, sh to say this, this, this word condemnation is the act of declaring one guilty. And so this this is saying, and the and the and the, and the sentence is given, but uh, the writer here says that there, there is therefore now no condemnation. You're not guilty. Uh, he says to them that are Jesus Christ, are Christ Jesus. And so this morning we uh, can we can be assured by the Holy Spirit. And by God's word, that there is no condemnation to our souls. Now, that's not speaking uh, about our flesh, but that's talking about our souls, that eternal flame that's within us that will will live on forever. And the uh, flesh must die, will be resurrected, and live forever Amen. With, his, with his soul. But uh, it's a great it's a great consolation this morning to know that there is uh, <coughs> there is a way there is a, uh, a a way that a person can uh, overcome hell uh, not through his own works but through the work that Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary and this morning. This is what he's, the writer Paul is saying. There is therefore now no condemnation. You're not going to be uh, held accountable uh, for the sins that uh, Jesus that Jesus already died for. You're not going to be held accountable for them because you've done them. We've all done them. We were born in sin. We were guilty of sin. But Jesus Christ died for our sins. Amen. And he made it possible that there wouldn't be no condemnation. And so he says here, there which which are in Jesus Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And Amen. so this morning, uh, we that are saved, we we have these problems with the flesh, and we so many times are uh, aware of them through the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit that dwells within us will tell us and reveal to us, hey, listen, you don't need to do that. And the flesh, on the other hand, is pulling and saying, well, it's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing of it is, people, we we ought to listen to that inner voice, that Holy Spirit that talks with us. And you, we that are saved know His voice. Amen. And we can hear it and understand it, and we need to obey it. And we need to remember this morning that we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and there's no more condemnation to us and we can rest assured in that now like I say this doesn't this doesn't keep us from having these problems with the flesh because we we realize that Paul in as as great a, a man as he was and as 
close to the Lord as he was, uh, he had the problems. Right. He said he gave the he gave the uh, 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 the story about the warfare that was going on in his body. Now there, if, and if it was going on in his body, and him as close to the Lord as he was, listen, people, it's that much more going on in our bodies because right. hey. We just cannot. We just cannot control this flesh. Mm -hmm. We cannot control it. And people say, "Oh, yeah, we can," but we can't. And you know, I, I, I see it more and more all the time. That's our problem completely. Is our flesh. Mm -hmm. And so many people want to know. Well, why do you? Why do you keep saying something about the flesh? Well, it's the, It's that thing that will hinder you from serving God. Right. It's that thing this morning that if, 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 if God has called you unto Him, and you know that for sure, and you've been saved, listen, that flesh and the devil are in one accord. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, you, can, you can say what you want to, you can think what you want to, but listen, the flesh, the flesh is still lost, mm -hmm. and it never will be saved until after it's dead. And so, he is trying to to tell these people here at Rome about this condemnation and, and how that the flesh is the interference of this. Now, we see here in, in uh, Philippians, I believe it is in Philippians, I'm going to read something to you if you turn there or you can just listen. But in Philippians 3, and verse 3, I believe it is, let me look and see, yeah. No confidence, he says here, uh, notice, well, let's get started in verse 1, we'll get the whole picture. Finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you, to me indeed, is not grievous. But for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Amen. And so this morning, when you open your eyes and you look around and you see something that really attracts them and you wanna you wanna really get in on that and lust on that and do that, listen, you need to say no. You need to say no, you need to turn that head and listen, it's the same thing with anything that's fleshly about you and it, it's drawing you to do something or it's drawing you to something. Listen, you need to rebel against that flesh and say no and put it in its place because listen, that look, that look, if you let it, if you let it fester, will cause you to get into something that you shouldn't get into. Mm -hmm. And here is why he's talking about here in, in the book of Philippians there about having no confidence in the flesh. He says, he says, there, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. So Paul, Paul is he is encouraging these people by telling them how close to the Lord he was and what all he has went through in this flesh. And still, he says, I am more. Because he says, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisees, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless, but what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. And so a lot of these, th these things that he's talking about here, persecuting the church and all of these things, was <coughs> through the flesh, and that was before Paul was saved. But he says, all of these things, he says, I, 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 I can tell you this, that there's no profit in serving the flesh. Amen. And he says, I'm more. In other words, Paul... Paul was in a way saying, hey, listen, I've been there and I've done that and I know what I'm talking about. And the flesh, you don't have no confidence in it. So uh, he said, but what things were gained to me, count I, I count loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb that I may win Christ.
Christ. And so Paul, Paul had, Paul was a good witness. Mm -hmm. Paul had been there. He had, he had suffered all of these things in one place there. He suffered shipwreck and, and, uh, uh, he was stoned and, and he was, he, he was, they thought he was dead. He was, one time there he was called up to be in the presence of God. And so he went through all these things and, and he's telling us the same thing that I'm telling you this morning is not to put no confidence in the flesh and be aware of the flesh because it, it, it's a deceiver to you and it wants what it wants and what it wants is not good for the slip spirit. It's not what's pleasing to the Lord. So he said here uh, in verse uh, Two, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And so this law of sin and death is, and God, God gave the law to Moses, and he said, you either do it or you die. Mm -hmm. that's, it, that's it. Well, we come to see in, in studying God's word that none were able to keep the law. And the only thing that or the only thing that would that would solve this problem for those that were under the law and that they, they didn't keep the law was that God would let them offer an old animal for a sacrifice and this would not clear their, their slate but it would roll back their sins for a year and then another year would come and they'd roll them back again. Well, they kept on and they kept on. Well, they died with those sins rolled back. And so they, he, they, they had a place called Abraham's bosom that they went to. And, during, and, and, and in time to come, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to take care of those sins that were there in Abraham's bosom, but not all, only those, but also for my sins and for your sins, as as God calls us and as He gives us, forgives us, and He He, he spares us through grace. And so this is this is what He's talking about here when He says, "For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free." From the law of sin and death. So he was set free by the law of Christ. Now in verse 3. We see for what the law could not do. In that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin. Condemn sin in the flesh. And so we see again that. That the sin that is condemned is the sin of the flesh. And why is it? Because that the devil uh, did his trick thing and got all flesh that was ever born into the world to be to be uh, saturated, if you would, with sin. It was full of sin, and it, it could not it could not go to heaven. It could not be with God in that condition. And so God had to send, or He did send His Son. And I shouldn't say had to because. God didn't have to do anything. Right. He, he loved us. He loved us. And he sent his son Jesus Christ. And you know. You say this is old stuff. Yes it's old stuff. But listen. It's good stuff. And it's something this morning. That we need to be refreshed with. It's something that we need to go out of this building with. Thinking about well. I need to keep my flesh under control. And Amen. that Jesus Christ. Come and die for my sins. And he says here that it will make you stronger. It will get. It will help you to be a greater witness for him, and it will just build you up and make you a better person altogether. So he says uh, here in verse uh, four that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so the only way, and he's saying here that the that the law could be fulfilled, and Jesus Christ did that. Amen. He fulfilled that law. He walked in the way that God would have him to walk. He he done everything. He he crossed every T and and dotted every I, and he done everything perfect upon this earth while he was here. That he was a perfect sacrifice. For the sins of those that were under the law and for those that would be under grace. He was a perfect sacrifice. And this made it, it's made it possible 
Listen, people, it's possible for us to be with the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. It's possible. And listen, all we, I mean, you, 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 you say, well, all you have to do, no, it, it's this way. You, you stay in tune with the Father if you're lost. You, you continue, you continue to pray to God. Amen. Even if you're lost, listen, He will hear, He will hear that prayer that asking Him to save your soul. I believe with all my heart in this morning, if you pray to Jesus Christ and ask Him to go to the Father and ask, and ask for forgiveness of your sins, that God hears that prayer. And I believe this morning that's the only way that a sinner can be saved. He can't do nothing and, and his Amen. family can pray for him and they'll hear that. But listen, that individual needs to pray to, to the Lord Jesus Christ and continually be in prayer. Amen. And even though even though they're lost. And, and and you know, you say that's that's bad. But listen, that's that's it, people. And and we need to be much in prayer. For our loved ones that are that are lost, we need to be much in prayer for our loved ones that needs anything that they have because Jesus Christ is the key to the whole thing. He's the one that goes to the Father and and, and submits that prayer and says, "Hey, this is this is my this is my uh, request to thee, Father." And that prayer is in the ears of God, and God can can or He, he will if. If, if you're sincere, he'll hear your prayers. Amen. And so, uh, you know, it, 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 it's not it's not no it's not no Einstein theory thing. It's just, it's just as simple as it can be because God will tell us how to do it. And so He says here <clears throat> in verse five: For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Right. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Now that's the way that it should be with a lost person and a saved person. The lost person, he he follows the flesh. He enjoys he enjoys the flesh because of, listen, that a sinner enjoys sin. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you say, well, that's not right. Yes, it is because he has he has not he's not tasted of that heavenly gift. He has not really seen his condition and what lies at the end of his life. And so he goes along with this flesh and he enjoys it. And he, he entices it. He likes it. But that one that has the Spirit of God in him, the Holy Spirit, listen, he knows the difference. He knows the difference between good and bad. He knows when the flesh is trying to get out there and do something that it's not supposed to do. And so this is what they said here. Uh, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That's the laws. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. That's the same. And so the, the, the saved this morning has, no, has not that desire within their spirit to sin. Because listen, this spirit that I have in me this morning was saved, was saved by Jesus Christ. His blood covered my sin. He cannot sin. And you say, well, that's boasting. I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm proud this morning to say that my spirit cannot sin, people. Because if it could, I'd be lost forever. Mm -hmm. But it, that's according to God's word. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust that as long as there's breath in me. I'll trust that. And I believe that this morning that this soul that I have does not sin. But I know this flesh. I know what it does. Mm -hmm. It's forever, it's forever, it's forever trying to get me into trouble. It's causing these old foolish thoughts. It's causing evil thoughts in my body. But listen, I have this assurance this morning that God has saved me with an everlasting salvation. And I'm not coming to condemnation. I'm, I'm, I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. And so this morning, that's that's the assurance I have by 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 loving loving the spirit that God give me that, that is saved. So here again in verse 6 for to be carnally minded evil is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So there's the difference between having a, a lost soul and a lost spirit and having a lost flesh and a, and a, and a life spirit. 
That's the difference right there. Because we don't we don't have a yet have a live spirit and a, a live body or a, or a, a holy body. So he said here, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Amen. An enemy against God. Uh, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Amen. It can't be subject to God's law because it's lost. Now, if it's saved, it's subject to God's law and it will listen. It will hear the Holy Spirit, what it says, and it will do it. And it may sometimes, it may take chastisement to people because, listen, there's not a one in here this morning that's saved. He's saved, I've been chastised by God. And why was it? Because you disobeyed me. Right. That's exactly why that you're, you're, you've been chastised. It's because you're a disobedient child. And that's, that's, that's common nature with the human flesh. And that's the reason why that well, when we're small or whatever, we, we were chastised by our parents because we disobeyed. And it's the same way with God. He will disobey you. I mean, He will punish you but because you're a disobedient child. But it's good for you. Amen. It's a blessing to you. If, you, if, you, if you're chastised, it shows you that He loves you. Mm -hmm. He loves you. And so don't don't never don't never get mad at God because he chastises you. Because listen, he's doing it with a heart of love. Mm -hmm. Because you're his child. And listen, he wants you to walk just as straight. He don't want to I, he don't want you to stand before him someday and say you were a disobedient child. I punished you, you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't submit. And you lost this, and you lost that, and you lost this. He don't want that. He wants every one of us to have a, the, all the rewards that we can get. And then that way we'll have something that we can present to Jesus. But here again, <clears throat> in verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. And this morning, do you know? Do you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in your body? Any, do you ever? Does He ever speak to your heart? Does He ever? Does He ever counsel you? Does He ever talk to you? If you do, hey, listen, that's what He's talking about here. But ye are not of the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. And he, he has to dwell in you because this old flesh that you have is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And He's got to dwell in you. And if He's not dwelling in you, people, then there's, 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 there's something wrong. Amen. And if He don't speak to you, if He don't guide you, there's something wrong. And you need to... You need to you need to ask the Lord to help you with this thing. You need to you need to be sincere with Him and say, God, I, I just don't know what's going on. And the, and the 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 Bible says this, and 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 I don't I don't experience it. And uh, I, I I know what I'm talking about, people. The Holy Spirit will deal with you Amen. if you're saved. He'll talk to you. He'll tell you things. And a lot of times you say, Well, is that or is it not? But listen. You'll, you'll know for sure if you just keep on listening. So here it is in verse 10. But if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but spirit, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Amen. And so this morning, the righteousness that I think that he's talking about here is that when we follow the Holy Spirit, we try to walk in a, in a righteous way. We try to be a, a righteous person. We try to uh, do the things that we know that is right. And we try to stay away from these sins that so easily beset us. We try to stay away from the things that, uh, that aggravates us. And so he says, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead. So this morning, you've got a dead body if you've got a live spirit. But if you've got a, a dead spirit, you've got a live body and a live spirit, or a dead body and a dead spirit, it, it's, it's all dead until you're made alive by the love of God. 
and he calls you unto him and makes your spirit alive or that you can over you can overpower the flesh and live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in verse 11, <clears throat> but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Now here's where then that this old ugly flesh, this old evil flesh that wants so much, wants so much to get out there and indulge in every mucky, marry sin it can. It'll risk, it'll risk getting everything wrong with it and kill it just to get out there and indulge in it. But he says here, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your, your mortal bodies. He's going to make your bodies, these old ugly, ungodly, fleshly bodies, he's going to raise them up, he's going to make them alive. And he's going to let that spirit that's in you now, that's alive, join this fleshly, saved body and be a one-time thing. It's going to be a one unit. And it's going to be in paradise, be in heaven, be in the presence of God forever. Amen. That's exactly what he's talking about here. So he says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that, and that's the Holy Spirit, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, you don't, you're not a debtor to that. You don't have to listen to that. You don't have to pay no attention to that. But he says, therefore, brother, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Amen. And that is an eternal death. But if you through the Spirit do mortify or uh, kill the deeds or, or, or keep the body in control, the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry. Abba Father. Amen. There it is. We cry, Abba Father. We, we cry, our Father, which art in heaven. We cry to Him. And listen, it, you know, well, if I, if I get saved and I don't have to cry to Him, listen, to the of the Father. But listen, the more, the more we cry to the Father, the more we want to. Mm -hmm. The more you want to. Because, listen, you love Him. And, and the more that he does for you, the more you love him. And the more you love him, the more he'll do for you. Mm -hmm. And so you want to cry to him. You don't want to have the things that uh, going doing that this, this flesh does for you. You don't love that no more. You know, you know the devil will come in and try to entice you and try to entice you and say, Oh, it's all right. It's just a little thing. It won't hurt nothing. And you think for a minute, well, that'd be nice. But then you get to thinking, and the Holy Spirit says, Hey, you better stay away from it. Amen. Stay away from it. And you get to thinking about it. well, it ain't as good an idea as it sounds like. But he's he's very he's very sharp. He's very tricky. And uh, he can use words on you. He can use thoughts on you. He can use other people on you. And uh, you, you think, well, that ain't nothing wrong with that. But listen, you think it over twice. And uh, because you remember, you're still in the flesh. Right. You're still in the flesh. And uh, uh, one day we won't be. One day we'll be in a holy, we'll be in a holy flesh, and then that way we can we know all things and be in the presence of the Lord. Thank y'all for listening to me. Mm -hmm.